This room is so moody. I cannot get a temperature that's just like, like even. I'm either boiling hot or I'm so cold. And it's May. It's May and I'm wearing a sweater, like a fuzzy one. I also have a robe in my lap. I'm really chilly. I'm just gonna hold my sleeves like this, like little mini mittens for the entire video. Hello everyone, I am here today to share with you guys a new video of testing out some new products and this time it wasn't the, the YouTube beauty gurus that maybe buy this stuff, it was the Instagrammers. And these are all products I have not tested before and every single one of them they were either wearing them in a ton of videos and photos or they were using them in a tutorial and I was like yes need it. I will link all of their Instagrams down below in case you guys are interested in checking them out, which I highly recommend. And give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, if you enjoyed it, you want to see more of these, if you have any suggestions for other Instagrammers you guys really enjoy, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to click on the little notification bell so you don't miss out when new videos go live. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the majority of these products actually today are all on the face and I think I'm gonna do like a, oh, like a bronzy, very like summery kind of a look, except for one which is a nod to like the Instagram community in general and I decided to try out some new lashes that I haven't tried before because it seems like everyone has really really on point lashes on Instagram all the time. And the lashes that I'm going to attempt today are by Lily Lashes and they are the Miami ones which are super popular. A ton, a ton of Instagrammers use these. I actually saw these on Desi which technically I guess she's a YouTuber but also an Instagrammer. They look really scary because they're so big but they're also fluffy and I like fluffy lashes but big lashes scare me a little bit. These ones by Lily Lashes I do really like. These are the can ones and they are beautiful. They are soft and fluffy as well but they tend to be more angled and tapered um, towards the inside and fanned out towards the outside. Whereas Miami, in direct comparison there, similar but a little bit different. They are more of like a rounded shape, still very fluffy, and they are a lot more dramatic than the can ones. So first I'm gonna take them and I'm just gonna put it on my eye to see how much I need to take off here. Uh, which by the looks of it is a lot. Oh man, I hope these don't look nuts on me. We're gonna trim off like this much here. Don't worry, I'm not gonna trim with on my eye, don't worry. What I like to do with the lashes, I sort of like line up exactly where I want it to sit on the inside corner and then I just trim it to fit that. Okay, we need another like section in a bit, all right. Oh, you know what? Those aren't as bad as I thought they were gonna be. Okay, be honest, <laughs> do these look ridiculous on me? Because they feel ridiculous. I'm not used to seeing myself in such like, like super dramatic lashes and like full ones at that. I do wanna fill in, there's like a little tiny bit of a gap here, so I'm just gonna use a little felt tip uh, pencil. This is the uh, Steel Estelle Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner, the micro tip one. So I'm just gonna fill in the little itty bitty gaps that I see here. Now moving on for the moment to the face makeup and I'm gonna be using a combination from an Instagrammer who has been using this combination a lot recently. And I've used one of the products before and I haven't used the other one so mixing them together I thought would be kind of interesting. Her name is Sandra and she used a combination of the Essay Lauder Double Wear with the um, Ollie Hendrickson Truth Sea Rush Brightening Gel Cream. And she used the combination of these two together in multiple photos and her skin is just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It smells like oranges. Oh, it smells nice. I've never used a cream before, but obviously I've used double wear before. So maybe this like thins it out, makes it a little bit more summery. I don't know. I want to see what it looks like. I want to see how it wears throughout the day, all that fun stuff. Now it doesn't show anywhere how much she combines. So I'm gonna go like that and hope for the best. It definitely does dial back on the full coverageness of the Estee Lauder Double Wear, which makes sense. Um, it makes everything smell really nice, but it almost seems to give this like nice dewiness to the skin, which I am really enjoying right now. So far, I really like it. It's not um, bunching up in spots. It's me meshing really well together. It's looking really nice and soft and like dewy, but still full coverage on the skin. So far, so good. Next up is a concealer. This was used by Vanity Makeup and she was using the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. And so when I went into Sephora to go and buy it, um, like every single one of the Sephora employees were telling me how amazing this concealer was. Every single one of them. It also seems to be super highly rated online. It is a very full coverage, self-setting concealer. So you don't necessarily need to set it with a powder though for longevity's sake. If you need to, you can totally do that as well. Um, what else does it say? 
High performance, weightless, 12 hours, medium full coverage that's crease transfer and water resistant, and it's going to blur the look of imperfections. I got the shade 1N, but I also have these like little sample things in case that is on the light side, though I liked the undertone of it, so I'm gonna go with that to start with, at least for under the eyes. It has a flat and rounded applicator here, and I'm just gonna go in like so. I don't know how much to do. That's probably enough, right? That's probably, that's probably too much. And then in terms of blending it, I had two very different opinions um, from the Sephora, Sephora employees. One person said to buff it in with a brush, that's the only way to get that nice blurring kind of effect. And then the other person said that they um, preferred using their fingers to pat in the product. So I'm gonna do one of each side, see which one I like better. It is very full coverage though. I do like the undertone. Oh, that was actually a good match for under my eyes, all right? That looks really good. That, that looks really good. And now we're gonna use my fingers for the other side. I feel like I use too much product on this side. I'm gonna take some of it and put it on my chin. So far I don't have a preference in how they look under the eyes, though the brush was a lot easier. And because this is supposed to be a self-setting concealer, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one eye, set it with powder, one eye not, and just see what it looks like by the end of the day. L let's be honest, that's the real test of a concealer. If a concealer looks as close to as good as it does when you first apply it, as by the end of the day, that is a winner to me. I'm just setting everything with a little bit of a loose powder. I'm using the blurring one from um, Elizabeth Arden that I tried out in the Amazon video. Really like it. So I'm gonna leave this one unset so once it dries down, they should look the same, though right now, obviously this one's a little bit shinier and we'll just see what they look like by the end of the day. Next up is a face palette that was used by Crystal Clear Makeup. She is a Canadian Instagrammer and I love her tutorials. They're amazing. She's so talented. And she was using the Narcissist Wanted One, their cheek palette. Um, so I wanted to test it out because her skin also looks really pretty. If I, if I can open it, there we go. Let's take off this little film thing. Are you a narcissist? Probably. Inside we have a variety of warm and cool tone blushes. There are some shimmery ones, there are matte ones, and she was using this one down here, so that's the one I'm going to use today. And I'm gonna be honest, I love the NARS blushes. They're so beautiful. <laughs> Whoa, that was really pigmented. Okay, let's reel it back, reel it back. Just blend that out with another brush. Whoops, light touch with the blush, Rachel, light touch. I'm gonna mix in a little bit of that shimmery shade there as well. Very pretty, but I'm mad that I went so heavy handed because it's like a little bit streaky back here. So just keep that in mind. These blushes are very pigmented. Like, look at that. It looks like aggressive on my skin. That's like way too much blush. Um, for me personally, I think it's I think it's beautiful. Great colors and great coverage. Um, it's not my absolute favorite though. All right, and now on to the final product, which is a highlight. This was um, used by Nikki Makeup and I found her through my popular um, feed and I saw this tutorial and I was just mesmerized. I watched it like 47 times. And basically she was applying the liquid Prosecco pop in this like one area and just buffing it out to create that sort of glass skin like effect. And it was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So you can see it here it is very, very gold, but like a really pale, pretty gold. So I'm just going to buff it onto my skin and hopefully this works well because that girl, that model skin was like ridiculously stunning. I'm using just a little bit at a time and sort of building it up, creating it almost to look like it's like seamless with the skin. The shade is a lot softer than I was anticipating, especially since, like compared to what was on the model. Like this is not even kind of close. I'm gonna try and like dot it onto the skin instead. Honestly, I'm a little worried at this point that this shade might be too dark for me, which I'm kind of confused about because again, the model was also really, really pale. Um, so I thought like, oh, this would add like a nice golden-y kind of a sheen, but it doesn't seem to be picking up on my skin the same way. I don't see anything. Do you guys see anything? Cause I don't see anything. Now I will say that the description is a little confusing. It says here, like it has the Becca Shimmering Skin um, Perfector Liquid Highlight and Prosecco Pop and eyeshadows from the Natasha Denona palette. And then it goes on and it says brows and it gives, and then lips and then it gives. So like, I, I don't know is, is the eyeshadow also something that she put on the skin? Cause like I have the palette here and like this shade's kind of a golden-y color, right? I don't know, this shade is actually not as yellow as I was expecting it to be. So maybe, maybe she put some of that on top? Let's experiment. Ooh, that's really pretty. Like now that is intense. I think, I think I went a little, a little bit overboard. But the, like that seems to be like a better match to what she did 
on the skin on the model. So like, I like that. That's, that is a nice combination. So now I'm gonna go about my day. I will check in with you guys tonight. We'll talk about the products, my favorites, least favorites. We will zoom in, talk about everything. And uh, yeah, I'm still not sold on these lashes, guys. I don't know how I feel about them. But I am really enjoying this like whole golden summer vibe. Don't mind me, I'm just popping a little highlight on the collarbone. So I'll see you guys tonight. Hey guys, so it is now at the end of the day. This is what my makeup is looking like. And to be honest, like it's, it's still looking pretty good. And you can definitely tell the difference between the two under eye areas where I set versus where I didn't set you can see it starting to wear off on the area where I didn't set it's not super noticeable so if you only wear like a little bit of concealer I think you'd be fine but if you're doing like a full face definitely need to set it um, I can't wait to take off these lashes I'll be honest they're pretty but I don't know if they're my favorite I think I still like the can ones better I like more of that wing shape that's just a personal preference thing. They're still really pretty and very fluffy. And my skin makeup is like, everything's holding up really strong. And I mean, credit is where credit is due. The Estee Lauder Double Wear is no joke, but like I didn't put on a primer, guys. Mostly, uh, entirely because I forgot. But I don't know, the combination of the Ollie Hendrickson Gel Cream plus the es Estee Double Wear, like that was a really nice combo. I, li I like it. Like my skin's looking really good, full coverage, but still kind of dewy. I'm digging it. The highlight is also super glowy. It is a bit on the glittery side, which I think is due to the eyeshadow that I put on top. I like, it looks beautiful on the model. Do not get me wrong, gorgeous. And I think it looks stunning in photos, but for every day, like it's not something I'm gonna be like reaching for. It was like a fun trick though. Like I was, I was sold on it. It looked really good. And the blush palette is good. It's just very, very pigmented. So I think if you have a deeper skin tone, I think you might enjoy it more than I did. Will I still use it? Yes, absolutely. The colors are beautiful. I just have to remember to use a very light hand with it. What Instagram accounts do you guys follow? Leave me a comment down below. I wanna know some new Instagrammers to follow, um, tutorials that you have been enjoying. Try and link them for me. I don't know if you can, can you put links down there? I don't even know. Anyway, send me accounts, send me people that you guys want me to test out. Maybe I'll do another testing of Instagrammers at favorite products as well. And since you're at the end of the video, go and check out the two videos on the side and check out the Race of Life channel. If you guys haven't checked it out already, I do a lot of organizing decluttering I test tasty recipes like it's a really fun videos I really enjoy it so go and check that out if you're interested and that's everything I hope you guys are having an amazing amazing week and I'll see you guys all in my next video love you girls Mwah.